All right, so we want to finish up this example from uh, today's lecture talking about the titration of a weak acid with a strong base. Okay, so we have two equations, remember, that we're working with, titration equation and the salt ion equation. Our first kind of mini question that we asked ourselves was how many milliliters of our base was required, and that was straight up stoichiometry. Okay. Then our next question was we wanted to ask ourselves what is the concentration of the salt at the equivalence point. Okay. And we set up our ICE table using the titration equation and we need to put it in moles because we have the two different volumes. Well, they're the same value but we have two volumes that we're working with. Our change was all of it reacts, all of our acid and all of our base reacts so that we get none in the end. That gives us our moles of NaNO2 divided by our total volume, 0.2 liters, to get a concentration of our salt of 0.05 molar. So this last question we want to ask is, what is the pH of a 0.05 molar NaNO2 solution? So we want to set this up just as we would any other one. Uh, we're going to use our salt ion equation. For the ICE table. Our change will be X. Then we're going to have to determine pOH, then pH. So we have our ion from our salt is the NO2. That's what's going to be contributing to the pH. So we have NO2 minus interacting with water in equilibrium with HNO2 and OH minus. We're going to set up our ICE table. And this is now in molarity because we only have one solution now that we're dealing with. Okay, the titration has already occurred, so we don't have to worry about our total volume. Okay, or our two different volumes, we just have one. So we're going to use molarity. So our initial for the NO2 minus, this splits apart right, into a one-to-one -one stoichiometric uh, ratio. So our concentration of NO2 minus is the 0 0.05. We don't care about water. Our initial of HNO2, this is zero, okay, because what we started with is titrated and it's gone away, okay. Uh, so zero initially, and the same thing for hydroxide ion. Our change is unknown. We're in equilibrium, so it's going to be X. and plus x and plus x and now we are going to set up our equilibrium constant expression and solve that for x and okay, first question to ask ourselves is are we going to use ka or kb so the answer is we want to use kb because we are producing hydroxide ions. So this is acting as a base. So we have a KB expression. We get X squared divided by 0 0.05 minus X. All right. And we can make our assumption so that this is approximately equal to X squared divided by 0 0.05. We were given Ka, so our value for Kb is going to be Kw divided by Ka. 
So 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 4.5 times 10 to the negative 4. That's equal to 2.2 times 10 to the negative 11. So now we can have x squared divided by 0 0.05 equal to 2.2 times 10 to the negative 11. So x becomes So I get 1.05 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay. 10 to the negative 6 divided by 0 0.05. Uh, definitely approximation is OK. So our x value is our concentration of hydroxide ion. So pOH is equal to the negative log of 1.05 times 10 to the negative 6. So our pOH looks like we essentially have 6.0. So the pH is 14 minus 6.0. So the pH at our equivalence point is 8.0, which checks out. We are expecting it to be in the basic range, so we are expecting a pH greater than 7. All right, so just to recap this question, okay, we're looking at determining the pH of a titration at the equivalence point of a weak acid with a strong base. So helpful to write out the two equations. The first one, the titration equation, it's a neutralization equation. So it has a single forward reaction arrow forming water and a salt. And our salt ion equation is the ion from the salt here that's actually contributing to our pH. In this case, we had a basic salt. We then determined our volume that was required to titrate our acid, and that was just using stoichiometry and our molarities as a conversion factor. Then we determined our end concentration uh, for our NaNO2 for the salt, okay? and we had to use an ICE table that used moles because we had a volume of acid and a volume of base. And so we used the same calculation for both the acid and the base. Took our ending moles of NaNO2, divided by our total volume to get our concentration, which we then could use to determine the pH of the solution. Okay, and this is just a same question of asking of what is the pH of a salt solution. We set up an ICE table here, okay, changes X, we had to use Kb expression because we are producing hydroxide, so we needed to look as a base. We had to solve for Kb. Ka was given in the, our example here. The assumption works, the approximation works, um, so our x value here was able to be plugged in, taking the negative log of that concentration, gets us pOH, remember because we were looking at hydroxide ion, then we take our pOH, subtract that from 14 to get the pH of our solution. This question is one of those that's definitely worth uh, working through a couple of times back to back to back. You know, get that scratch paper out um, so that you can practice calculating this pH. There are also questions from your book uh, that are definitely helpful and on sapling.